This Monday, the MSCS Media Podcast released the video episode of their interview with Chris Langan, which has already garnered over 200,000 views on YouTube and many more on Spotify. I want to break down some key points from the interview. For brevity, I won't touch on the various political topics covered in the interview, but will instead focus on issues relevant to CTMU metaphysics. Consciousness and space-time. They start comparing and contrasting Donald Hoffman's graphic user interface, or GUI theory of conscious perception, with the CTMU. Hoffman says, Perceptual experiences do not match or approximate properties of the objective world, but instead provide a simplified, species-specific user interface to that world. Hoffman and Langen agree, in this respect, that the objects we see through conscious perception are essentially icons we interact with. Where Langen and Hoffman differ is that the CTMU has the logical and mathematical structure to support Hoffman's graphic user interface. One needs to stick the GUI into the display of the of reality self-simulation, modeling reality as an identity operator that simulates through its conscious agents to identify and attribute existence to itself. It's like the Matrix or other simulation theories put forth by the likes of Nick Bostrom, Elon Musk, and others, except that the hardware for the simulation is not residing in an alien computer somewhere in the metaverse. The computer system resides in the structure of reality, which creates the simulation by, for, and through itself. Hoffman says consciousness creates space and time. Lane explains that how we interface with space-time is a series of snapshots. In the CTMU, there's this distributed solipsism, where each person's private experience externalizes their internal reality through perception. So the modeling of space-time in our conscious experience is into a manifold, a mathematical space with a certain number of dimensions. There's this what Langen calls a neomorphic grammar, which affects the evolution of the universe from one state to the next according to some end or purpose, which can include the will or volition of any number of sensor controllers, such as human beings in the universe. We can only interface with this manifold through a series of snapshots, from which we get the illusion of motion. To fill in the logic and structure that needs to be there in between frames, you need to have something the CCMU calls a conspansive manifold, which is how you can have continuity even when dealing with tiny quantities of space and time. Right now I'm taking AP Calculus, and they teach you an infinite series converging method in which you can approach a limit from both sides using an epsilon-delta relationship, allegedly proving the manifold's continuity. But this point that you're nearing is an actual cut in the coordinate space, a zero-dimensional point. And when you add all those points together, you get zero, zilch, nada. Using this method, you can't actually model the real structure and dimensions of space-time. You need that generative array for that, which is what the CTMU provides. Another mistake scientists and mathematicians make is to treat the objective universe, the model of the universe they've created in their heads using coordinate planes and vector spaces, as the actual universe, leading them to declare an absolute separation between mind and matter. They're confusing their model of the universe with the actual, actual natural human world we can see and taste and touch. Physical space only exists in your mind as a representation. Ultimate Reality Creation is a self-simulation by, for, and through ultimate reality. Reality is an identity operator that identifies with itself through the process of creation and then attributes existence to its own identity. The CTMU God is called the GOD, the Global Operator Descriptor of this reality self-simulation. The internal logic of the self-simulation is through the metaformal system, an intrinsic language that reality uses to communicate with itself. Theories of Everything Physicalist theories of everything, even clever ones like string theory, suffer from a fatal flaw. They fail to connect mind and reality, in other words, the internal and external aspects of existence. A proper theory of everything, like the CTMU, must explain the connection between quantum fields and general relativity and connect the intentional and extensional aspects of the cosmos. In other words, it's not just about what's out there, but what's in here, in our minds. Afterlife. What happens when we die? Chris Lyon says the same eumorphic grammar that attaches the G.O.D. to his creation and determines the evolution of reality over time is the mapping along which we, as sensor controllers in reality, are created. Suppose we have not hindered our soul, our connection to the G.O.D., by terrible deeds contrary to the universe's moral law and the intrinsic purpose of human existence. In that case, we can reunite with God and have our essence transferred to another existence, a heaven, a resurrection body. God will carry you and sustain you because you are helpful for his purpose of self-identification. 
he's building an identity for himself through your metaphysical material. So when you die, if you qualify for salvation in simple terms, your soul is retracted to home base, the identity of the syntactic metaverse, as it's called in the CTMU which is the infinite expansive potential of all possible existences, then you can get shot out into a different terminal domain. Regardless of your circumstances, you have free will and moral responsibility. The buck ends with you. Come hell or high water, you are judged according to the objective standards of the G.O.D., the source of being, which has to remain pure and invariant to distribute over everything in reality. Meta-religion Religion is an indispensable moral foundation. For instance, the golden rule, which appears in nearly every religion, love thy neighbor as thyself, is the fundamental axiom of moral symmetry in the CTMU, and the ethics taught and embodied in the New Testament and other holy writ is an expression of the intrinsic moral law of the universe. Religion also contains fundamental theological and metaphysical truths. There is such a thing as God, free will, the soul, an afterlife, etc. And we have responsibilities to one another as individuals. We ought to love and serve God, and take the words of his prophets and holy writings to heart. This much is all good and pure. However, conflicts arise when interpretations between and among religions start to differ. The various religious scriptures lack the logical and mathematical structure to resolve these disputes, even though all of these religions, in a sense, are grasping at the same fundamental truth of reality. There is spiritual insight in every part of the world. To resolve these disputes, we need the syntax of the CTMU, so that the various faiths are not perpetually in pointless conflict with one another, and everyone can retain their cultural and religious identities without subscribing to a syncretistic one-world religion. Chris Langan says, Meta-religion is the new state of theological consciousness that we need to stop arguing about things like God and good versus evil and other moral conundrums. The CTMU resolves these disagreements and places each of the world's great faiths on the unshakable logical and mathematical foundation of logos and absolute truth so that they can thrive once again and rekindle the dormant creative fire of humankind. Free Will The universe, being an identity operator with no background, totally self-configuring and self-processing, with nothing external to itself by which it could define itself, has to be self-contained and self-determining. In other words, it has free will. We are images of the universe as a whole. What the universe is doing for its sensor controllers, such as human beings, is injecting its being into each of these life forms, meaning humans are microcosms of the universe, and the universe is transferring free will to its images. Nothing is hovering above us in some determining way, causing us to act in a particular manner. We are intrinsically self-determining. The future is not determined. Reality is constantly relaxing and adjusting past constraints to model its evolution and that of its sensor controllers. Telesis. Reality's fundamental stuff is not matter or energy, but something called telesis in the CTMU. Telesis combines the intentions of the G.O.D. and its sensor controllers with energy and information. The CTMU calls this telesis because it is evolving towards a teleology, from the Greek telos, for meaning or purpose. There's this self-replication and self-selection whereby telesis chooses the best configurations of itself to extract truthful and good order out from its primordial form as unbound telesis, which is infinite expansive potential, so that it can build an identity for itself, which is the intrinsic purpose of the universe, self-identification. Chris Langan says, The universe is constantly creating. It's in the process of creation. It's constantly looking for opportunities to nucleate itself. It's a potential. It wants to self-actualize, so it's constantly looking for things around which it can self-actualize. Telesis consists of future realities, possible futures. It creates a timeline that leads to its emergence through telic recursion, which is like ordinary causation except that it works backwards. Telic recursion is how order emerges from chaos. Telesis looks for opportunities to actualize itself in all these quantum particles and chemicals that appear in this universe. This is essentially the story of how you get stars, galaxies, complex life forms, etc. It's the teleology of the G.O.D. unfolding in the life of the universe. This completes our brief introduction to CTMU metaphysics. We have a lot of very exciting content coming up soon. Let the light shine forth in the darkness, and may the peace of our Father in Heaven be upon you. Like and subscribe. Peace.